Hunch is an AI workspace that enables you to harness multiple AI models to do complex work that you can easily reuse and share. The canvas is made up of blocks that are connected to create workflows. Workflows allow you to instruct multiple AI models to solve complex problems in multiple steps, improving AI's performance considerably. We also built new constructs that completely change how you might use AI in everyday tasks. The canvas gives you access to many AI models from LLMs to image generation, text-to-speech, and many more. We're super excited to see what you will build. Understanding block types is essential to getting the most out of the canvas. The most common types of blocks are AI blocks and content blocks. We currently have a few different AI models you can choose from, starting with LLMs, image generation, image to text, text to sound, and many more. For example, in the LLM section, you will find models from OpenAI, Google Gemini, Claude, and Mistral. Each AI block represents a different AI model. For example, if you run a GPT-4 block, Hunch will send your instructions to OpenAI and show the process output at the bottom. While each AI block processes information differently, all AI blocks behave very similarly. The top section is where you add your instructions, and the bottom is where the output appears. Let's add a DALI 3 block and generate a simple image. Similarly to the text generation model, I added my instructions at the top, and an image appear in the output section. Now, if I rerun this block, a new image will appear. To create a better viewing experience, you can also resize blocks by clicking and dragging on the bottom right corner of a block. Unlike a chat, where you can ask questions and see the response in a thread, AI blocks can only handle one instruction and output at a time. So to build your workflows, you will need to create new blocks and connect them to existing blocks on the canvas. In this example, the block on the right has also access to the previous output generated by the blocks on the left. You can see a complete list of AI blocks in a few ways. You can double click on a canvas to bring the block menu or click the plus button next to an existing block. You can also click on the top left item named Blocks to open the block menu on the left. Unlike AI blocks, content blocks are static and don't process information. Content blocks are helpful for tasks that require a lot of context, such as company context or any additional information about the problem you're trying to solve. Instead of placing prompts and additional context inside the instructions section of an AI task, you can break this down into multiple content blocks and connect them to the relevant blocks on the canvas. After connecting them, you can reference the block titles in your instructions to make your prompts easier to write and inspect. Let's look at another example. If you want to summarize an article, it's better to add it to a content block and then connect it to an AI task instead of placing both the article and prompt inside the AI block. This two-block structure allows you to easily change this information in the future without having to rewrite the block instructions. Imagine you want to summarize multiple articles using the same workflow. All you need to do is paste a new article inside the content block, and the AI block will rerun and process a new article. Another benefit of keeping information in different blocks is that you can easily connect an existing block to any block on the canvas to give your AI tasks more context about your problem. Instead of rewriting instructions, all you need to do is to connect blocks and compare the results. Content blocks can also help group outputs from different blocks into one block. This is because content blocks will always show the information connected to its input. For example, if you have three AI tasks connected to the input of a content block, the content block will show all three outputs in one place as soon as they finish processing. 
This pattern is useful to aggregate information in one block before sending it to a new block. In this example, I'm grouping the output of four AI tasks in one content block before sending it to a text-to-speech model. Gravity is one of the four fundamental forces of nature, alongside the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. You can also edit what's inside a content block. Say you want to delete a few sentences or add comments to a previous output. You can double click on a content block to trigger edit mode. After finishing your edits, you can deselect the block by clicking on a canvas. One thing to remember is that content blocks receiving information from other blocks will erase your edits once the previous block has a new output. If you want to protect your edits, removing connections or duplicating a block is necessary. To duplicate a block, you can go to the menu and click on duplicate block. Now that we cover some basic concepts, let's look at how information flow between blocks and how you can leverage the principles built into the canvas to improve your work. As we've seen before, the blocks on the right can access the output of previous blocks on the left. But let's go under the hood and see how the final prompt is constructed. To inspect what's happening, open the top right sidebar and scroll down to see the compile prompt section. All the information connected to a block's input gets grouped into one large prompt before reaching the AI model you're using. Looking at the compile prompt, we will find all the information inside the content blocks on the left. For example, the AI block on the right will send to GPT-4 all the information inside the instruction plus everything inside the content blocks on the left. Because the information in each block gets compiled into one large prompt, you can reference connected blocks in your instructions using the block titles. For example, the instructions inside this GPT-4 block reference the blocks connected to its input. So even if the content is outside of the block, GPT-4 will be able to understand my instructions. When blocks are connected, the canvas keeps track of the state of the blocks to ensure they are up to date. If a block is up to date, the output will be in its default state, as we see here. The output will look slightly dim if the content is old and no longer valid. In this case, you need to rerun the block to update the output. Let's look at another example. Imagine you instructed a DALI 3 block to create an image. If you change the instructions, the output's opacity will change. This happens because the image no longer matches the instructions at the top. You can still copy the output if you wish to use this image, but as soon as you rerun this block, this image will be replaced by a new image. Another critical concept to keep in mind is that blocks that have other blocks connected to their input can only run after all connected blocks are finished processing. In other words, blocks on the right will wait for upstream blocks before processing outputs. For example, if a GPT-4 block has two blocks connected to its input, but only one of the two finished processing, the block will only run after the second block is finished, 